What's up, Simonix? Welcome to another Sunday special episode, day 15 of our Ionic holiday calendar. Today, I want to take you on a quick adventure through the Ionic universe because I know a lot of people of this channel might just be casual users of Ionic or getting in contact with it every now and then. Only a few of us are really hardcore users and for most others that are watching my tutorials that's like 99% of the content here but there are many other things related to Ionic that you should know about uh, if you're changing jobs, if your company decides uh, if they want to use Ionic, if there are any changes, just so you know what they are talking about or that you can expect what Ionic is about and what it has to offer as well. So that's what I want to show you today. Just a quick information before all of this, I never was and I am still not uh, affiliated with anything related to Ionic. So whether you buy any services from them or not, I won't get a single dollar. I'm just doing this to review these things, to give you an idea how they work. If you decide to use them, that's cool. I guess Ionic will be happy then. And if you decide they're not for you, then, well, it's not my problem. So that just as a quick disclaimer. And now let's start our adventure through the universe. All right, let's start our journey at the center of the universe, which is the Ionic website that you will browse on the very first time. The Ionic framework is actually just one part of the whole Ionic company. So that's just the platform, cross-platform UI toolkit for building applications. And it doesn't really matter if it's for uh, React or Angular or Vue or just plain JavaScript. That's just one part of Ionic. Of course, we're talking about this most of the time, but there are a few other components that we should talk about. So let's first of all get into Stencil. You might have heard about Stencil around Ionic, especially uh, when Ionic 4 launched and they um, stated that every component was now built with a Stencil. Uh, everyone thought they had to learn Stencil. I think by now this has a bit calmed down so far. Actually, I'm not really using Stencil very often. I know people are using it and I think that's cool, but the uh, general message is you don't have to know or uh, understand Stencil. The only thing Stencil can do for you is build reusable web components. Stencil is basically a bit like, uh, I think it's called Lit Elements or so from Google, yeah, from the Polymer project. That's also in the same domain of creating web components. The syntax is actually uh, a bit similar. I checked it out as well. Um, but Stencil is a bit cooler, as you already can see from the landing page. Now, why is Stencil interesting? Um, if you go into the Ionic project on GitHub where you can check out everything and just inspect whatever you want inside the core components, let's say a uh, button, and then you will see inside the TSX file that these components are actually all built with Stencil. And if you know Stencil, uh, it is a bit easier for you to understand how certain components of Ionic uh, work. So if you encounter a problem with a button, an avatar, an item, it is pretty easy for you to dive into the code of the component and understand uh, what you can do with them even without a documentation. We will get to this in a later uh, video as well. So that's just a quick word on Stencil. It's good to understand. You can uh, also build for your company reusable web components. So if you have a requirement for that, it is definitely a great tool, just like Lit Elements. Um, but besides that, no, you don't have to use it or have to understand it. Next up on our journey, Capacitor. Capacitor, uh, I don't know how long it's out. I think just a few months uh, since the first real release. Uh, before that, there were a lot of beta versions. By now, um, I really enjoy using Capacitor, but it is still a bit limited. So the idea is that Cordova only works on iOS and Android devices, devices once you build your application. Capacitor uh, should work on the web as well. So if you just run your application on the server, uh, if you build a progressive web app, then you can use uh, certain functionalities through Capacitor in your application and they will still work. Also, you can still integrate Cordova plugins with Capacitor in your app, but now uh, the funny side or the interesting thing to note is 
Even if you're using Capacitor and then add Cordova plugins, that doesn't mean that your app now magically works in the browser with certain Cordova functionalities. These Cordova things will still only work on a device. That means, uh, in general, Capacitor is great and I think it has a big, really promising future. Uh, it has a few core APIs that you can use and using them is pretty easy. Um, in general, the idea behind Capacitor is also good in contrast to Cordova. So with Capacitor, you just have the uh, project, the native project as an artifact. And with Cordova, you always regenerate the project and that can be kind of tricky. You know this from Cordova. But if you look at the uh, community plugins, the list is still not very long. And for Cordova, it is a lot longer. So I hope there will be more community plugins in the future. I don't really have time to create these kind of plugins, but I'm sure the community will do it and then Capacitor will be great. So right now, Capacitor is good. If you find the functionality you need, you can use it. You can use it in your progressive web app. It makes testing things easier. But if you need specific Cordova functionalities that are not yet included, you still have to fall back on this. All right, let's continue. Uh, we're already way too long in this video. Anyway, the Ionic framework, no, AppFlow called. I think it's AppFlow, right? Uh, let's check it out. Ionic AppFlow, yes. That's the continuous integration or mobile DevOps environment. The images look actually a bit cooler than my uh, personal side. Basically, you can connect your Ionic apps to AppFlow and you can do a lot of cool things. As you can see in this video, track errors, deploy live update, build a native binary in the cloud and work together with others. So if you're working in team, agency, company of a certain size, Ionic AppFlow definitely makes sense. It is a paid tool and it doesn't add anything to your app that you, okay, that's not tricky to say. So it does add something to your app for the money you pay, but these are not mandatory things. So you can, of course, completely for free build Ionic apps, but with these functionalities like building in the cloud, um, uh, what when I say um, building in the cloud, having different channels, um, hot reloading or pushing your app out really fast, monitoring JavaScript errors in production, so these kind of things are at some point mandatory for your apps, but in the beginning you don't need this. But it is a great service if you need additional functionalities and need to make sure that your application runs really smooth with your team. So then check out AppFlow. I'm actually not sure about the pricing. Then we got Ionic Enterprise. About Ionic Enterprise, I actually don't know too much. I don't know about the prices, uh, but I guess they will be a bit higher than the other stuff since it is enterprise support. They will give you custom onboarding. They will give you additional support if you encounter any problems. Um, they have special integrations that you will also see if you go to uh, the Ionic framework documentations native and you will find pre-built solutions up here or premier plugins. And these are plugins that are not for the general user like us, but those are paid plugins. And they will have um, uh, improved support, I would say, because all other Cordova plugins are only maintained by the community. Uh, so if there are any errors with new versions of iOS and Android, they will be fixed a lot faster. They have stuff like AuthConnect or the Identity Vault offline storage. So really great integrations that can help you to build better apps. But again, these are not a must have if you wanna build free apps. But if you're an enterprise and are uh, certain about a strategy to build hybrid apps, these kind of things can really uh, improve your app and give you more stability in your apps. All right. That was Enterprise and I think finally what we missed is Ionic Studio. Ionic Studio, I haven't worked with it too much since I still enjoy using Visual Studio Code, but Studio is their new environment, don't call it IDE, uh, to work on your Ionic application made for Ionic. So uh, I'm really bad with this tool, so my review of it will be pretty shitty. But uh, it has a drag and drop editor as far as I know so far. 
Uh, you can work directly with your pages. You can uh, set things directly in here. You have the split view with the code. So everything is built to work with Ionic. I think you have the documentation somewhere in line, uh, especially you have the CSS variables in line, which will be covered by my head, I guess. So let's move them here. So Studio is really a great tool. I haven't tried it too much, so I, I won't say anything bad or specific good about it, but I'm sure that you can uh, build apps a bit faster with it if you get used to this new environment. So that was our hopefully quick or not so quick 10 minute journey into the Ionic universe. I just wanted to give you the full picture of the services, tools, products, frameworks, whatever Ionic has built so far. I guess perhaps next year there will be more. Maybe we will hear about this in one of the future videos. Um, but for now, if you get any questions, feel free to leave them below. But keep in mind, I'm not the creator of Studio, Enterprise, Ionic, Stencil, Capacitor or anything like this. So perhaps someone from the Ionic team will jump in if you have questions or directly ask in the appropriate place, maybe on GitHub or their support channel. So I hope you enjoyed another Ionic Sunday special episode. I'm sure you will love next Sunday's video. But before of that, we got six more days in this week and I'm looking forward to them. So see you tomorrow for a brand new day of the Ionic holiday calendar.